Hello guys, today I have a review of a new tool called Laravel Enlighten. With that you can check your health of your project so to speak with more than 100 checks for things like as you can see here cross-site scripting, CSRF, security, data exposure, serialization, injection, stuff like that with just one artisan command. And in this video I will review it on my demo project. So imagine we have a project just one of my Livewire kit projects, really simple Laravel with Livewire. And on that project, we just do Composer Require Enlighten Enlighten, like this. And the next thing we will run PHP Artisan Enlighten, from what I remember. Actually, let's take a look at the documentation. PHP Artisan Enlighten. Okay, PHP Artisan Enlighten. And let's see what happens. There will be 60 checks performed on any parts of the application. And it took like 10 seconds or so. I didn't really pause that video. And I have 10 things failed. A lot of those things depend on the server configuration, server environment where your project is running. So some of them are server specific and we will get to that. But for example, this security issues in my Laravel framework version. So I created that project a while ago and in the version 8.20.1 there was some security issue and I know about that, I've read about that, but Enlighten reminds me of that, that I need to run Composer update. Similar check 56, unstable version, so that is considered unstable. Also some PHP configuration is not secure and what I like about Enlighten is if you copy and paste the actual URL, they have documentation about everything, so it's not just fix this. It's exactly why and what you need to do, and links to more references, to external systems, to PHP configuration, to whatever is needed. So Enlighten also can be kind of your advisor or even tutorial for kind of perfect Laravel and PHP project. So let's move on what other stuff is failed. And I will be honest, I'm doing honest review, not just praising. Some of that stuff I didn't really enjoy or like or approve. You could call it false positive, or at least they probably should flag it not as failed, but as a recommendation. So let's take a look. Your application, potential foreign keys, fillable. What is wrong with that? So let's take a look at app models product line 12. Product line 12, which is this, is just fillable fields. And they are referring to category ID and manufacturer ID. And if I take a look at that documentation URL, this text, which basically means that someone can fill others team ID or others user ID and enter the data in not their area. So that is a security issue potentially. And they specify it is difficult for the analyzer to assess the situations. So it's kind of they're flagging that anyway, but it's up to you to decide whether you need to do something about it. And in majority of cases, those ID fields are totally fine, secure and normal. So this is one of those kind of false positives or things I wouldn't check or things I would flag differently. So out of those 60 checks, decide for yourself what is applicable, what is not. A lot of those checks are really useful. So for example, cache prefix, also for performance issues, recommendation how to speed up your MySQL, queue driver, removing the middleware for trust proxy so it wouldn't fire and it would speed up your application a little bit. So quite a lot of recommendation and it's only on my local really simple Laravel project. I guess it will be much more useful if you run it on production server in production environment for a bigger project. You will find many more stuff to fix. And also there are a few things you can configure. So if you don't want to flag the server environment stuff, there is a config enlighten if you publish, you can specify skip environment specific. For example, default true, or you can set that to your ENV. And if we rerun that again, we should have less failed. So it basically analyzes only your application, not the server. So we have seven now, not 10. So all of those environment specific things now become not applicable and you should fix only like composer update. Actually, let's try it out. Let's run composer update and let's see if it flags them if we still have seven false, seven failed entries. Okay, composer update is finished, enlighten. And now we're up to date. Dependencies are up to date and only five failed checks. And also Enlighten has a pro version. So the things that I've run just now, they are all for free, 60 checks. But if you want to have 60 more and in total you would have 
120 checks. You could try out Enlighten Pro and the pricing is 99 per project. So if you have bigger project and bigger budgets, it probably is useful. And ironically, as I was planning to do this review, Enlighten author, one of the co-founders, Paris, emailed me asking me to do a review of Enlighten and offering me a pro version to do the review of pro version. So I didn't ask him for that. I'm not paid for this review, but I have a pro version license to test it out. And I've copied the same project to another folder where I have Enlighten Pro. And here's how it looks with Enlighten Pro. We have 120 checks. So we have nine failed, but a lot more stuff is checked. So you can read those items. And also I asked Paris in email, what are the most important stuff and most important items that you would consider the reason to buy pro version? And here's the answer. I will just quote it. So N plus one check. This is probably the most typically important in bigger projects. Of course, there are other packages doing that, but why not have Enlighten all in one? And then there are dead routes, unrestricted file uploads and more stuff. So 120 checks in total. And that's it. If you want to try out Laravel Enlighten, the link you can see on the screen and will be in the description of this video. What do you think about that? Try it out and comment below. Or maybe you use other tools to do that performance and security check. Let's discuss in the comments which is better or worse. And if you have any other tools that you want me to review, shoot in the comments or email me directly at laraveldaily.com and see you guys in other videos.